This man's wanted, man. There's a $200 reward on him. You killed him for money? He robbed the bank for money. That was eight years ago. He's not an outlaw anymore. Not now. You're worse than any outlaw! You're scum! I didn't put the reward on his head. I'm just collecting it. John Pike, bounty hunter. A man without mercy or pity, who has forgotten the meaning of humanity. But Pike will soon be reminded of it by the dead man's gun. American West, a gun touched by evil, passed from hand to hand, changing the lives of all who possessed it. Its origin unknown, its dark legend grew, till it came to be known as the Dead Man's Gun. Got here. My name is John Pike. The dead man was Douglas Ward, wanted for bank robbery. Doug Ward? He lived close to here, never caused trouble. It won't cause any trouble now. Well, I don't believe it. You body hunters turned my stomach. Law's the law, Sheriff. I only operate within it. Well, come on inside. I'll make out your bank authorization. <laughs> your best. See your tent and raise your tent. Damn, it's too stiff for me. The road are you in? Hey, Marie, darling, I'll pay you twice as much or twice what he's getting. <laughs> guy right from under our noses. We didn't even know he was wanted. I never let money get away, Joe. That's how come you're the best. Good looking sidearm, Johnny. Mind if I have a look? There's only one way you can get this gun from me, Ed. And it ain't by asking for it. <laughs> Reminds me of someone I took out in Denver a couple years ago. 
I asked him if I could look at his pistol. So he, he hands it over to me. I shot him with it. <laughs> Collected the reward without the need to use my own bullet. You feel like some cards, Johnny? Seen as how you're flush. Ah, uh, I don't feel like too many card cheats tonight. Anyhow, I got other plans. Hello, there, ladies. Hey, leave some for me. I thought you had a customer. We need some cooling down, too. <laughs> Allow me, Marie. Don't you ever get undressed. Oh, yes, ma'am. Another week of this heat, and people a bit. This man is Hank Bemis, one in three states. What about that young fella down there? Innocent bystander got caught in a line of fire. A bystander to you, maybe. To us, he was Ben Morrison. Who? you find out soon enough. Meantime, you're under arrest. Morrison's an accident, Sheriff, and I got reward money coming to me for Bemis. We'll see about that. Let's work within the law, Sheriff. I got him laid out in the livery stable, Mrs. Morrison. I figured you'd want to make your own arrangements. I need to see my boy. 
Who did this? The man in the cell. His name is John Pike. He's a hard case bounty hunter. And you say it was an accident? Seems to be, based on eyewitnesses. He came upon an outlaw named Bemis. There was gunfire, and one of his shots killed Ben. It's no accident if he came to town with killing on his mind. I hold him just as responsible as if he had come for Ben. And he must pay for it. Now, there will be a hearing, ma'am. Please give me some privacy, Sheriff. set for 10 in the morning. Can't see why you're bothering, Sheriff. I didn't mean to hit the Morrison boy. But you don't much care, do you? <sighs> Mine's a hard profession, Sheriff. People get hurt, killed. You like that? Yeah. Men I go after are lawbreakers. I like to hunt them down. I like the look of fear in their eyes when I know their time's run out. Don't you ever worry you might end up in their shoes? No, I don't, Sheriff. I serve the law. I don't break it. It is the verdict of this court that Mr. Ben Morrison's death was by mishap. Mr. John Pike should not be held liable. It can therefore be immediately released. Mishap. An unfortunate mishap. I'm afraid so. He murdered my son. But he also killed Hank Bemis. And in these parts, that counts for a lot. So he goes free. It's the law, Catherine. May be the law, but it isn't justice. Good day, ma'am. I'll be wanting my gun back, Sheriff, and a bank authorization on my reward money for Bemis. You killed my son. Ma'am, your boy was just at the wrong place in the wrong time. No matter what it takes, I'll see you pay for it. Are you threatening me? That would be pointless. Well, come on, we'll go get your paperwork settled.
crazy son of a bitch. Must have thought I was someone else. Whiskey. Big one. Sure enough. Looks like you're attracting some enemies, Pike. It seems you're a fish worth catching. What are you talking about? Catherine Morrison, you know another Morrison ranch? Placed a $1,000 bounty on you. Dead. Well, everybody's talking about it. What for? Accidentally shooting her son. Can't put a bounty on a man for a thing like that, ain't legal. Tell that to Catherine Morrison. Money makes its own laws. Every gunman in four states will be out to collect. I need a place for the night. Evening, ma'am. Freight the barn's all we can spare. Oh, that's fine. I'll pay two dollars. Oh, no need. It's not a hotel room. Much obliged. That rumor has reached my ears. It is against the law to solicit an innocent man's murder. The word innocent and the name John Pike have no acquaintance. Well, I wouldn't dispute that, ma'am. But under law, he's innocent and entitled to its protection. What other justice is there than his death? You will be charged with murder if you pay the man who kills Pike for the bounty. I told you that is a rumor. What do you expect me to do about it? I suggest you call off the rumor. Ma'am. Johnny boy. Brody. Griffin. Just in time for dinner. Shut your gun. Real slow. Mind telling me what this is all about? Haven't you heard, Pike? You're the biggest bounty on two feet. I heard all right. But it ain't a real reward. It's a notion of a crazy woman. Ain't nothing fake about her money. Are you gonna kill me? Nothing personal. I thought we were friends. True enough, Johnny. Not a thousand dollars worth. Pike, 
You're as dead as that fish on that stick you're holding. Wait. I'll make a deal. What have you got? I'll give you the bank draft on my last kill. It sounds fair to me. Not so fast, Griff. Why not get him to sign it and we'll kill him anyhow? Deal. So, where is it? They're over there. In my saddlebag. You watch him. Just passing through, Pop. Look, I need a place to heal up. It's been six years, you bastard. I'm about done for. All right. Better go on inside then. Good, Maria. Yeah. Not bad for a dancehall girl, don't you mean? No. Um. Hike. I don't like Mr. Sheriff. Why have you brought me here? I thought you should take a look at what your bounty on Pike has brought in. Who are they? A couple of greedy fools who got in too deep. Did Pike kill them? Likely so. They were bounty hunters, too. How could they resist a shot at a thousand dollars? What's your point, Sheriff? The temptation of big money causes people to die, Mrs. Morrison. Is that what you want? You know what I wanted. Well, may I say, you were going about it in the wrong way. Perhaps. And I shall have to find another way. I'll get word out that I've rescinded my offer on Mr. Pike. That's a good decision, ma'am. Hey, you look better now. Not that you deserve to. How bad is it? Just a flesh wound. How can a man like you be so lucky? I don't feel so lucky these days, Maria. Yeah, I heard about it. Some rich woman wants her head. Word gets around, don't it? Everybody wants in on a good deal. You too? It's not the money I'd kill you for, Pike. It's how you treated me. I never promised you we'd be permanent, Maria. I never did. You can stay till you're fit to ride. Well? The medicine can only do so much, and well, I've done. And I've had all of its benefits. And the illness has spread. I'm sorry, but it... How long? I, I wouldn't plan on Christmas. Thank you for stopping by.
Mr. Rue. How good of you to come. Yes, ma'am. I understand you know the killer, John Pike. Bounty hunter. And I'm sure you know I want him dead. I heard that you lifted that bounty on him. Quite so. There are few men skilled enough to handle John Pike. Pike's been the best for a long time. And what about you, Mr. Rue? I think Pike's been the best for long enough. I am prepared to reinstate the bounty if it is kept strictly between you and me. Interested? Yes, ma'am. Good hunting, Mr. Rue. Oh, that was good. You didn't know how to take care of a man. I haven't been with a man in a long time. Always had a real soft spot for you, Pike. Even though you're a real bastard. I'll be riding tomorrow. Ain't safe to stay around here too long. You get out of this trouble, you. You gonna come back? Can't say. You never think past tomorrow. You know, this, this little place ain't much, but uh. Might be a safe home for us both. <laughs> Is that so funny? Oh, the idea of me being some damn sodbuster. What am I gonna do, raise pigs or something? I'm talking about a real life. Oh, well, I ain't interested in your real life. You can't give me more than I already have. Real life. <laughs> oh, you can deal me out. Check it out, Joe. Don't bother. He's gone. How do you know? It's plain on her face. Looks to me like he's heading south. Got about an hour on you. Well, it looks like Pike has a lot of unfriendly country ahead of him. <laughs> Poor bastard.
Met him, Joe? Damn. Looks like somebody didn't hear about the general bounty being lifted. You rode all the way out here for nothing? Wait. This ain't Pike. How do you know? Because this... ain't Pike's gun. Pike's pistol was a real beauty. Couldn't bring himself to part with it. That's a hell of a mistake. I can see you. You're dead. Blow it out of there, hands high. Don't you, mister? You could have got yourself shot, boy, skulking around like that. Well, my pa sent me out to hunt rabbits. What are you doing here? I asked a question, Sonny. Well, this here's my pa's land. It ain't fit for a campsite. Suits me just fine. You an outlaw, mister? Do I look like a damn outlaw? Ask your question, boy. I figured you must be on the run. I mean, no campfire, and I can smell you from here. Fact is, I'm a law enforcement officer. I'm in pursuit of a gang, and they're on the run, not me. Well, if you plan to take them by surprise, you best stay downwind or get yourself a bath. Give you a dollar for one of them rabbits. Keep your money, mister. Looks like you need it more than me. Get going, kid, before I get mad. Remember me? You look like hell. You get like this when sons of bitches are trying to kill you. Haven't you heard? Miss Morrison lifted that bounty on you more than a week ago. Tell that to Joe Rule. Him and his pals have been on my tail for days. Where are they? I expect they'll be in town any time now. Thing is, Sheriff, I just can't keep running. How's it feel, Pike? Huh? I remember you telling me how you enjoyed the look in a hunted man's eyes when he knew the game was over. I've always obeyed the law, Sheriff. Well, don't leave town. Rule and his men can't kill you in front of witnesses. And I'll set him straight if he shows up. Mr. Rule. Evening, Sheriff. Well, that depends. John Pike stopped by. Tells me you're fixing to kill him. <laughs> Pike's not worth a penny since that Morris woman changed her mind. Besides, do we look like we're fixing to kill anybody? So you're just passing through. Gonna take a hotel. Need a soft bed for a change. Just keep in mind, killing Pike would be a murder charge. Hey, old timer. Need a room.
<laughs> if you have once, it'll be the last thing you ever do. You and your trail rats have been kind of eager to kill me. It's just a job, Pike. Morrison lifted the bounty. Wasn't legal. Yeah, but that lady wants you dead. She hired you to kill me? Private contract, Johnny. Do you say no to that thousand? You made a big mistake saying yes, Joe. So kill me. Then there'll be a real reward on you. What's your split of the thousand? Five hundred. My boy split the other half. There's more than five hundred in those saddlebags. It's yours if you agree to leave off. You can make your money without having to murder anyone. What's the catch? I ain't no rabbit, Joe. And I don't intend to live like one. We got a deal or not. It's okay with me. But that Morrison woman? She can always hire other guns, Johnny. It's time I made amends with her. I knew you would show up here eventually if you were still alive, Mr. Pike. You take good care of those graves. It's my late husband's wish to be buried here on our property. I expected to lie beside him long before our only son. Ma'am, my killing your boy was an accident. The hearing said as much that I didn't commit a crime. You appear to lack a sense of right and wrong, Mr. Pike. Well, I got enough to know that what you've been doing is wrong. Hiring those gunmen to kill me. Man like Joe Rule. And sadly, Mr. Rule failed in his mission. That's right, lady. There are numerous gunmen in these environs, Mr. Pike. One of them will get the job done sooner or later. Why do you think I'm here? To kill me, I suppose. No, damn it. To talk sense to you. Put this business behind us. What do you mean by talking sense, Mr. Pike? Saving your own skin? I've always lived within the law. Yeah, I killed a lot of men. But all of them were wanted for crimes. And I ain't the same as them. You don't even glimpse the deplorable nature of what you did. Nothing wrong with it. The law is after these men, and I only do what's already wanted. So we should all admire you. I don't give a damn what you think of me. Just as long as you leave me be. I can't do that, Mr. Pike. Any more than you could, your quarry. We've got to settle this. I thought you said you weren't going to kill me, Mr. Pike. Wasn't my intent. But I swear. You want me dead, you do it. Go on. Just as I figured. You can't do your own dirty work. Well, I can. And I do. Save your bullets, Mr. Pike. I'm dying already. I only have a few months left. Then I'll be clear of you. Indeed. But before I go, I would like to tell you how much I hate you for what you've done. As if I give a damn. I have three months, Mr. Pike. But I would gladly trade that in on justice for my son.
Law and justice are not always the same. Sometimes the difference between them is measured by the dead man's gun. is it? Dr. Thurlow. Uh, yes, yes. Welcome, my dear. How can I help you? I saw your advertisement. Um, you treat maladies through sleep. Yes. Um, thin blood, female problems, blurred mind. Mesmerizing cures them all. Oh, what about... A stifling husband. Ah, the bullying husband. Well, a mesmerized mind is fortified to stand up to the most brutish of men. Um, it may take several sessions, though. Oh, well, I don't know about that, and Thomas doesn't even know that I'm here today. Well, we'll just let it be our little secret, Mrs... Moorhead. Charlotte Moorhead. Uh, wife of Dr. Moorhead. The very same. You know Thomas. By reputation only, he's, um... None too fond of mesmerists, I hear. He thinks they're an affront to science, that women and the feeble-minded should guard their wallets against them. <laughs> well, it sounds as though your husband knows pitifully little about mesmers and even less about women. Shall we begin? Now, watch the rain. Light glows from your fingertips. Your body melts. Watch the rain, my little drainlet. Your eyelids are so heavy. You must sleep. So Edgar is a mesmerizer, relaxed. a physician of the mind, whose patients would do well to avoid his treatment. However, the good doctor is himself about to swallow a bitter pill. One prescribed by the dead man's gun. In the American West, a gun touched by evil passed from hand to hand, changing the lives of all who possessed it. Its origin unknown, its dark legend grew came to be known as the 
dead man's gun. What are you doing here? Taking you home. You leave me be. I can take care of myself. Dr. Moorhead, I assume, always a pleasure to meet a fellow physician. Don't flatter yourself. I'm a physician. Lord knows what you are. Well, your wife came to me. I only wanted to help her. Mr. Thurlow. In the war, I amputated a soldier's arm with just a pocket knife. The boy was like a son to me. Just think what I do to you. Go. Go. I I'm sorry, Dr. Thurlow. Good day. I told you, it's not a good idea. But without these ads, I can't attract the clients I need. Edgar, I'll run the ad, but you don't want it in this issue. Believe me. Just squeeze me in wherever you can. Dr. Moorhead had anything to do with this. You heard what he said. The man threatened me. Mr. Thurlow, I'd say you got a lot bigger worries than threatening notes nailed to your door. I spoke to your landlord, and he says that you're mighty late on your rent. Well, well, he and I have an understanding. I pay when I can, but times are... Well, it seems your landlord has reconsidered. He wants you out. Suppose you're here to piffle me with insults, too. Well, have at it, boy. D Dr. Thurlow? Doctor? You're the mesmer, right? Yeah. I, I saw your notice. Thought you might do whatever it is you do to me. Yes, of course. Well, come right in. you've got here. Demanded I fetch you a, a wee nip of whiskey. Um, I, of course, uh, protested, but uh, you insisted. Take it. Relieve me of my curse. I'll bring you everything you ever wanted. And then so.
If it's a curse, why do you keep it? Some diseases are easier to catch than to cure. waste of money. What would you know about science, he says. But then this story comes out by a doctor. A medical doctor. Agreeing with everything I've said. Ma'am, uh, you must admit he's making progress. He's much more spry. Spry? If you want to do some good, forget spry and make him buy me a new dress. He wastes all this money on you and I'm stuck wearing this old rag. Uh, Mesmer doesn't have that kind of sway with people. I can't just tell him, Mr. Sizemore, buy your wife an address. I wish I could. No surprise, people are suspicious. Strange place you got here, Thurl. The revolutionary always seems strange. Revolutionary? Oh, well, can't say as I know too much about that. But I do know the law. And the law, sir, well, she don't look too kindly on the likes of you. Good day. Ah, Sizemore, back so soon? Oh, my left hip is just screaming. Well, we'll see what we can do about that. Beautiful dress. Did your husband? Yes, the moment after we left last time. He let me have the pick of the store. You are floating over mountains, through clouds that wash away all fatigue, all cares, all pain. Do you feel it? Yes. Oh, yes. This is Sizemore. You all right? I'm floating. Passing clouds. Melting into the sun. The, um, sun, you say? The sun is so hot. You must be smothering in that dress. Yes. So hot. Oh, yes. It seems you'd be much more comfortable with no dress at all. Yes. 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 But I can't. Oh. But you can. Yes. You can. Yes. The heat's unbearable. Slip off your top. Yes. I can't stand it. Yes, yes, but there is relief. Yes. Yes, yes. Wherever I touched, you're instantly cool. My fingers are like ice water. Oh, yes. My kiss. Jack Frost's whisper. Tell me what you want, my little dreamlet. Yeah. Trip to the east. The cold. Cold east. New York City. That's nice more. Your wife wants a trip to New York. Take her. You're right here for your benefit. Are you watching?
Excuse me, ma'am. Yes? Do you mind if I show you a little trick? Trick? Astonishing, isn't it? How the light plays off the ring. Yeah. Now, you see what has happened, my dear? How the men who have your money take such cruel advantage. They do. See what he's doing now? He's got people lined up for his chicanery. You best put a stop to it fast. He's square with the landlord. He's broken no laws. What do you suggest I do, Dr. Moorhead? Sheriff, I pulled the strings to get you out of this job. I can still work them to get you out. Next time, try to wear something a little less, um, complicated. These buttons inhibit your therapy. Gentlemen, well, Thurlow, it says here you're a doctor of the mind. That true, you a doctor? While it is true, I have mastered the intricacies of the mind. I am not a medical doctor, per se. Ah, public deception, practicing medicine illegally. I think we've heard enough, Sheriff. Well, looks like you'll be sleeping on the county bed tonight, Thurlow. On what charge? I don't rightly know yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Well, I... This is preposterous. You've got the wrong man, Sheriff. He's the one writing threatening notes. You know what's really stuck in his craw? I'm taking his patience. I'm telling you, my business would do just fine without him and you nipping at my tail all the time. I'm just doing my job, Thurlow. Slide that plate down. Um... Let me show you a trick here, Sheriff. Oh, no, I'm beat. I don't want to see any of your two-bit tricks. Yeah, just take a moment. Watch the ring. Watch the ring. I'll just borrow these, Sheriff. Sheriff, but I'm afraid there's still a little work to be done tonight.
Who's that? Doc. Who's that? Show yourself. Sheriff, you scared the hell out of me. What are you doing? I don't know. This is madness. I put that rifle down at once. I can't. I. We must talk now, Dr. Thurlow. My husband's on the edge of death. How did you get out of jail anyway? I heard the sheriff locked you up tight. Mm, the sheriff saw fit to release me before his bout of madness last night. Is that right? Well, I saw the sheriff as he shot Thomas. And you know what? He didn't want to shoot him. But something was making him. And it's my bet that something was you. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Edgar, I don't care if you did it or not. My concerns are a little bit more personal. My husband is a very wealthy man, and I'm sure you know all about his plans to establish a hospital. I've heard rumors. As it stands, should he die, all of his money goes to that hospital, save for a modest, a, a very modest pension for me. I don't see how I fit into this. Deanna Sizemore tells me you did your little trick on her skinflint husband, and the next thing you know, he's taking her to New York. Well, I have a new will. One that leaves me a much more generous portion. All it needs is a signature before it's too late. That's how you fit in. I do promise to make it worth your while. My dear Edgar. One condition, I dream of. Condition. You let me mesmerize your husband as he slips into death. You are 15 minutes until the doctor arrives. Is that enough time? What? is the new will you requested. It just needs your signature. Perhaps he can't hear you. Uh, let me try. Dr. Moorhead, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. You must sign this, sir. Can you write? Yes, sir. You can. Oh, 
lot in common with the hyena, Thurlow. Oh, how do you mean? You both prey on the weak and the dead. You think popping him full of morphine is any better? Yes, if it alleviates his pain. But he'll be so drugged he won't even recognize his own wife. With my approach, he'll be aware to the very end. Maybe <laughs> beyond. Like my friend and colleague, I find you and your ilk repugnant. <laughs> but I must defer to Mrs. Moorhead's wishes. I only want what's best for my poor Thomas. <laughs> Charlotte. Try to relax, Thomas. Dr. Thurlow is here to ease your suffering. Just watch the ring, Dr. Moorhead. Watch the ring, sir. Watch the ring. Watch and put aside. He's still with us. He certainly looks more comfortable. Of course he is. He feels nothing but utter peace. Can you keep him in this state until his time comes? At least that long. Can he hear us? Only my voice, I should imagine. Shall we see? Dr. Moorhead, are you asleep? Yes, asleep now. Let me die, so. Uh, Thomas, are you in any pain? Please, allow me. Do you still feel the pain in your breast, sir? No. No. No pain. It should be a comfort to you that he passed so swiftly. Wait. Look. Vengeance. Vengeance, Dr. Moorhead? Before me, I see vengeance. But it will not aid you or my wife, Thurlow. Death itself is about to be overcome. As a doctor, shouldn't you be there to see it? You're telling me you found a cure for death? Yes! Don't waste my time. But, sir, Marcus! Better run along, little man. I want to see you. <laughs> You're just an apprentice. No use to me. But I get the doc's ear. Plus, you'll need witnesses. Marcus! Marcus! All right. But don't be late, boy. Yes, sir. breath, no pulse. Clinically, he's deceased. You didn't drag us here to tell us you've discovered death, did you, Thurlow? I didn't discover death, gentlemen. Just how to stop it. 
A monument to a whole new science has been unveiled, a science in which death is no longer the inevitable. Can you hear my voice, Dr. Moorhead? Dr. Moorhead, can you see us? Gentlemen, we've been had. No, 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 wait, please. Good God, look, look. Ah, I see. I see you, Thurlow. And I see my wicked, wicked wife. Gentlemen. Dr. Norman. I couldn't have asked for more. He knows. Who? Thomas. The dead man? He's not dead. No pulse plus no breath equals dead. You heard him. How do you explain what happened? I don't. I just thank God or the devil or... Whatever it was, it gave me the power to do it. You promised you'd make this worth my while, dear Mrs. Moorhead. <laughs> I expect you to keep your word. <laughs> <laughs> Every scrap of it, boys. They're uh, lined up around the block. Ah, well, be sure and bump the uh, tastiest drinks up to the top of the list, my boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, you know it. I'll have you taking your own patients, and we'll be doubling our income. <laughs> singing us a song. Mm. Dear Betsy, my darling, I'm dazed and confused. The love that I gave you's been so ill abused. Like a rose has its thorns, so a love has them too. Dear Betsy, sweet Betsy. My... Oh, my you keep your hands to yourself. It's time you finished what you started. Excuse us, please, Marcus. Finish what? My husband. He doesn't need finishing. Lovett said it himself. The man's dead. Clinically dead, he's saying, but he won't sign the death certificate as long as Thomas keeps talking. I did my part. He signed the will. No judge in this country will execute that will without a death certificate. Well, I'm sorry. Your husband has to stay just as he is. At least until I'm well established. <laughs> He's the best publicity I've ever had. Thomas was right about you. You are scum. Oh, no. Don't be angry. If money is tight, I'm sure I can help you out now and then. You wake him. Or you join him. You shoot me. And he keeps talking forever. I'm the one who put him in that trance. And I'm the only one who can bring him out.
It's over. I, I swear, it's all over. No, Charlotte. It's only just begun. <laughs> Stay at work, huh? Dr. Thurlow, he can be touchy. Oh, I, I, I know he can. You're learning a lot, though, I imagine. I'm trying. Marcus, I need your help with a little problem, a mesmerizing problem. I don't think I can do much without that gun. That gun? Yeah. I don't understand it, but, well, something about it puts a, a kick in a spell, that's for sure. Maybe we need to get our hands on that gun, then. Hmm? I'll make it worth your while. What do you say? to it that you're tried for murder. If he dies, he's already dead. You said it yourself. Yeah, well, he sure got a lot of pep for a dead man. Go fetch the deputy. You do nothing of the sort, boy. <laughs> yes. Put me to sleep or it'll wake me. Die now, Dr. Morehead. Dawdle on my time, boy. I'd heard you'd set up camp in, um, where was it? Vienna? That's right. I've been studying. Hmm. A sharp mind will take you far. I suppose you've heard the judge released your husband's estate. Hmm. He gave it all back to the Physicians' Council for the hospital fund. Except I hear that someone persuaded the council to scrap the hospital and create a mesmerizing institute instead. I may have bent their ears a little. You know me? Uh, tomorrow they unveil a statue in my honor. It'd give me great pleasure to have you as my guest. I'll do my best to attend. I learned 
learned a great deal in Vienna, Edgar. About watchmaking? I thought that was the forte of the Swiss. Oh, the Swiss can make them. But it's the Austrians who put them to work. I don't follow you. But you will. Dr. Thurlow? You got him. <laughs> How did you get him out here? I had a little help. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Doctor, if you would be so kind. Oh, no, no, please. No. In you go. Oh. You always said you'd be a monument to science, my little dreamlet. But I'm sure you never had this in mind. Die, Edgar Thurlow. Yet linger on. Without breath. Without heartbeat. A little something to remember him by. Comfortable, Edgar? By destroying the boundaries between life and death, Edgar played God. While he may have glimpsed heaven, his destiny awaits in a hell of his own making, thanks to the dead man's gun. <laughs> 